another beautiful day, another beautiful Sunday to give God the praise, to give him all the glory and the honor. God, you're still worthy of all the glory and the praise, and we're going to give it to you this morning. So wherever you may be sitting, wherever you may be standing, we ask that you just join us today in worship. As we go before the throne, hallelujah, despite the circumstances, despite anything that's going on, we're going to take time to give you praise as a body of Christ. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we give you the praise.
love of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is higher. 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 It's higher. deeper. Deeper. Oh, yeah. It's greater. Greater. Yes, it is. Yes, it, yes, is. it is. Yes, it Better is. It's greater. Oh. His love. Come on, just think about his love for yeah, a minute. Yeah, yeah. Think about his love for a minute. Can't nobody love you like Jesus. Can't nobody love you like Jesus. Come on, think about his love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He can love the unlovable. Yes, he can. Yes, it's he can. higher, deeper, greater. I'm talking about the love of Jesus. I'm talking about the love of Jesus.
coming after me. Yeah. Come on, right where yeah, you are, yeah. just sing that hallelujah. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Come on, sing it to the Lord. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Good morning, Refreshing Waters. Brittany King here. As you can see, we miss you guys dearly. We cannot wait to have you back in the church. We miss seeing heads, hair, dresses, and everything else. We miss seeing you guys so much. But until further notice, please stay at home until we let you know. But we just want to thank you guys so much for joining us online today. And hey, if you are new here, please go ahead and chat it and say, hey, I'm new. We just want to welcome you. And also, if you would like to learn more about us, please go to our wwc.org and also i just have a few other reminders don't forget that we do have three ways to give you can give by text message you can give online or you can also mail your contribution here and our address and all the information will be on the screen and also guys don't forget that we have social media and especially in this day and age right now where everybody's at home please make sure that you like and subscribe to all of our social media we have a facebook and a youtube the way you find us on facebook and youtube is by typing in refreshing waters and we'll come right on up now instagram is a little bit different on instagram you must type in our wwc live and we'll pop right on up on instagram as well now guys we know that this season has been a rough one and if you have been like me with little children at home, homeschool and all that good stuff, it's definitely been a rough one. You've learned a lot about yourself this season, but God. So we hope that this message will continue to encourage you, continue to bless you and give you what you need to get to the next day, the next week if we get lucky. But we hope that it'll touch more than just your hearts, but your mind and your soul as well. Here's Pastor Frank King, guys.
Well, good morning, and I want to just say again, thank you for joining us, whether you're watching us live or later. We always appreciate when uh, you tune in and to be a part of our service, and so we bless you in the name of the Lord. We're going to get right into the Word, but before I do that, I want to encourage you uh, to get some communion elements today. Uh, we will be doing communion after I get through with my message toward the end of this service, and we want to make sure that you're able to participate with us. And you say, well, I don't have any communion elements you know, like we have at church. That's okay. Uh, get whatever you have. Get bread. <laughs> get some juice or whatever th that, that you have in the house and go ahead and uh, prepare yourselves uh, for communion later on. So we want to do that together. And so we appreciate uh, you participating in our communion time as well. Today I want to begin a new series of messages uh, from the theme, the overall theme, overarching theme, entitled Reset. Reset. Uh, so this is a season, and I think you will agree with me, that this is a season that we've been all turned upside down. And uh, if you recall, a few weeks ago, I asked the question, what are you learning during this time? And I appreciate that uh, many of you responded uh, on the chat there, and you said that one of the things that you have been learning uh, during this season is that God is faithful. And uh, I want you to know I concur with that. Uh, God is so faithful. Uh, he has been faithful to me, to us, to this church, and I'm sure to you and your family during, during this season. For me, um, another lesson that I, I'm learning is this, that you cannot assume anything. Uh, and we should not take anything for granted. Uh, things, th things in life uh, can change in an instant. And you can go from calm to chaos in a matter of just a few moments. You know, two and a half months ago, we went from calm, as calm can be described in our lives, to a chaotic situation in our nation and in our world. And we are sti we're still there. We're still in this place where things are uncertain. And we are in a place where things that we used to do, we can't do anymore. Life has been turned upside down. And so I want to talk about five things uh, that need to be reset in our lives, spiritually speaking. Five things that I want to instruct you and I and teach on that we need to reset. And I want to do one per week over the next five weeks, starting with today. Five things, and we're going to do one of them today. In my opinion, uh, we have crossed over into a new, and I would say, permanent season of how we do things and will do things in our society. Uh, while I do not believe from a theocracy point of view that God caused this coronavirus to occur. He certainly allowed it, and I believe that he will ultimately use it for his glory and for the glory of his name in our society and in our own lives. Main point is this, that no matter what we are in, God will get the glory. So... We are, and you've heard this phrase before, we are entering into a new normal. Uh, and I don't really think that we know yet what this new normal will look like in the long run, but we are definitely in a new season and in a new place. And um, we have to evaluate where we are and the effectiveness that we need to have into this new season. Um, we have to evaluate uh, how we do things, and uh, the importance of recognizing that you can't do things in this new season like you did in the last season. Jesus was teaching, and he used this analogy when he was talking about the Spirit of God, and he was talking to his disciples, and he said to them, you cannot put new wine into old wineskins. Now, for us, that doesn't mean a whole lot because we don't really use wineskins, and um, we, so we don't, we don't really identify with that language. But here's the point that he was trying to make. In those days, they would 
house or store wine, not in bottles, but in skins. And in those skins, they would put new wine in and they would use it to pour it out uh, for usage. Uh, and so what was important is that they could not use old wine skins for new wine. How is that applicable for us today? Is that the wine skins represent the container by which the product is held. So here's, here, here, here is how it works for us. The Spirit of God and what he's doing in this new season cannot be contained in old vessels. In other words, we have to upgrade. We have to do 2.0. We have to realize that God is doing something new in this season. Amen. Praise God. But we have to use different methods. We have to uh, think of uh, how we can be effective in this new season. And that's where we are. That requires us to evaluate uh, the things that we are doing and what we need to adjust. I don't know about you, but there has been a lot of adjustment in my life. There's a lot of adjustments in your life. And so what are we learning as we go through this process? Um, <laughs> you know, after all, uh, let's think about this for a minute. Uh, when we talk about adjustment, after all, everything, not just what in my life and your life, but everything in society right now is adjusting. Everybody's trying to shift. Everybody's trying to figure out what we're doing. Um, stores are, are changing the prices because of the coronavirus. I mean, they're, they're adding tax. They call it coronavirus. They are adjusting uh, for the losses. Uh, businesses are adjusting. How we interact with one another is adjusting. How we practice life, how we do business, how we socialize, how we are going to be doing church in the future, there's going to have to be an adjustment. There's going to have to be a reset. And that's what we're going to be focusing on. What will, the question then is, be our new normal? Well, and I'm again speaking today from a spiritual standpoint. What are some things that you need, we need to reset in our lives? Things that we need to revisit and go, in the new season that I'm going in, I'm going to be doing this differently. In the new season that we are in, I can't go back to my old ways of how I process because they won't work now. I need to function in a way that will cause me and allow me to be productive and effective and even grow in the things of God in this new season that we're in. So first uh, thing, I want to invite you into a new normal in this area of our lives. I want to talk today, and this is, this is our number one thing that we want to reset. I want to talk today about cultivating a spirit of gratefulness. Cultivating a spirit of gratefulness. Moving from assumption to appreciation. Remember I said at the beginning of this message, we, can't, we cannot assume anything. Uh, listen, things have changed so rapidly uh, life has changed so rapidly, we, we cannot live in assumption that things are going to always be the way they are. And so we have to move from assumption to a, appreciation or to living and cultivating in this new season that we're in. I keep saying new season, but it's the, the truth of the matter, we have to cultivate a spirit of gratefulness, a spirit of gratitude. So I want to title this message in terms of the reset today's message. I want to title it, I appreciate. I appreciate. Developing a, a sense of appreciation for where we are and thanking God and being grateful that in spite of everything that is around us, we won't complain, we won't criticize, we won't even allow ourselves to be overwhelmed if possible. But what we're going to do is learn to function out of a spirit of gratitude. Now, Thanksgiving, that's what I'm talking about, is usually reserved for one time a year. We reserve it for Thanksgiving. We reserve it around November, and we talk about Thanksgiving, and we have some churches and some of our upbringings, we would have a Thanksgiving service, or we would get around the table and be thankful. 
If you really belong to a good Bible teaching church, they might have talked about Thanksgiving every now and then, uh, more than once a year, maybe in prayer time or maybe in a Bible study or things like that. But I want to invite you, and I do believe that this is a must. This is one of the biggest lessons that we have to enter into and look at thanksgiving and gratefulness and gratitude, hear me, as a lifestyle. Gratitude, gratefulness in this season that we're into, going into, we have to see it and function and develop it as a lifestyle. So four ways today I want to teach us on how to cultivate gratefulness in this new season. How do we cultivate gratefulness in this new season? Let me give you point number one. Number one is that we have to, if we're going to cultivate gratefulness in this new season, we have to be intentionally grateful. It sounds like a pretty redundant point, but it really is the point that if you're not intentional about your gratefulness, you won't really focus on it. You know, like I said before, life can change in a moment, so we must be intentional about being grateful. Can I say this to you? It's very, very important for you and I to get this. We, you, I, we are entitled to nothing. So don't take anything for granted. You are entitled, I am entitled to nothing. For example, we should not take for granted the food on our table. You ought to thank God for that. You should not take for granted the clothes on your back, the car you drive, the relationships that you have, the family that you have, the job and the career that you have been blessed to, uh, to have in your life, the ability to work. Uh, we learned that all of that, unfortunately, during this season, we've learned that all of that can be taken away in just a moment. So many people have lost so much in this season. And we have to remind ourselves that we cannot take any of this for granted. No matter how difficult, hear me, life gets, no matter how tough life gets, and at times it does get tough, and at times life gets frustrating, even in those seasons, we have to learn how to cultivate gratefulness through intentionality. Be intentional about it. About it. Um, you know, we long for what was, don't we? I know I long for some things that I no longer am able to do. I long, <laughs> brothers out there, sisters out there, I long for some good basketball games. And I can't have them. I used to take them for granted, and now it's no longer in my life. <laughs> now, that's a small thing, and it's probably a very... Um, minuscule thing as it relates to the grand scheme of life. But we long for what we don't have. And sometimes we, even when we had it, we weren't grateful for it. You know, we, we long to be able to go and just sit in a restaurant without fear or without any sense of trepidation and just have a nice meal with your wife or your husband or your family. And yet we can't, have not been able to do that. And when we had it, we took it for granted, didn't we? We just kind of, you know, figured that it would always be there. And perhaps we were not as grateful as we should have been in the past. I know if I'm going to confess and be transparent, I know that I probably wasn't as grateful as I could have been in the past. When things were just there, eh, we just kind of go, you know, it'll be there. I'll just handle, get it tomorrow. You know, but we have to reset our gratefulness meters we have to change some things right now. We have to realize and recognize that even as we come out of this season that we're in, whatever the other side of this is going to look like, that we're going to have to live a different way, and we're going to have to be grateful for the things that we have. We're going to have to be grateful. We can't complain about the fact that things are different. We have to be grateful. We have to say, Lord, thank you that through this season, I appreciate that you have kept me. And so it's important to be grateful and to be intentional. How do we be intentionally grateful? Well, I want to remind you of a couple of scriptures that will help us with that. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, 
you know this verse. It says, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You see that in that verse? He says, give thanks. And I want you to underline this. I want you to take special note of these next three words. In all circumstances. Give thanks in all circumstances. I love the way the Message Bible translates it. It says, thank God no matter what happens. Why? For this is the way God wants you, uh, you who belong to Christ Jesus, to live. He's not giving us, hear me, he's not giving us a suggestion. He's not saying, you know, give thanks if you feel good about it. Give thanks if everything is going well. No. He's saying give thanks in all circumstances. Everything that's going on in your life, good, bad, or different. He didn't say give thanks for them. He said give thanks in them. You don't have to be thankful for the coronavirus. I'm not. But <laughs> I'm here. You're here. We're in the situation that we're in, and since we are in it, God says in his word that this is how he wants us to behave. He wants us to be intentional, even in the middle of the mess. <laughs> Glory to God. Even in the middle of, uh, of all of the dysfunction in life and in all of the disruption that's happening. He wants us to reset our minds and in this situation give thanks. And so here's big idea number one. I know I gave you point number one, but here's big idea number one that you can take home with you that you can apply in your life. Here it is. Set a time every day to give thanks for something daily. Let me say that again. Set a time every day to give thanks for something. That's how you be intentional. I mean, set your clock on it. I mean, you know, if, if, it's, if you have one of those phones that have a little clock on there and a little alarm on there, set an alarm to just give thanks. Set my alarm for 11 a.m. every morning because what I'm going to do at 11 a.m. every morning is I'm going to think about something to give thanks for. This is my new season. This is my new normal. Listen, you're going you're gonna to establish all kinds of new practical normals. You know, how you go to school. How do you go to the grocery store? You know, how do you, sh how do you shake people's hand? Well, you're not going to be shaking anybody's hand. You're going to have all kinds of practical new normals. What about some spiritual new normals? Here's one of them. Set your clock every day, every time, every day, even if it's twice a day or whatever. Say, I'm going to have an alarm that will remind me to give thanks. Look at Psalms 118.24. He says, the Lord, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Psalms 118.24 uh, says that we will rejoice and be glad in the day that the Lord has made. And so set your clock to rejoice in what God is doing. Here's point number two. After we are intentional about uh, giving thanks and being grateful, here's point number two. Circumvent the circumstances. What do I mean by that? Circumstances are the things that surround where you stand. That's why they call them circumstances. It's the, it's the things that surround where you are. It's the things that are in your life that surround you. Here's the beautiful thing, and sometimes the, the thing that we forget about circumstances. Circumstances come and go. Today, it'll be one thing, and tomorrow, it'll be something else. Amen. <laughs> That's the God's honest truth. You'll have new circumstances every day. Some circumstances carry over. I get that. But you'll wake up every morning with all kinds of things that you have to deal with. And they come and they go. This is why Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow has got enough trouble on its own. 
You don't have to worry about tomorrow's circumstances. They'll be there when you get it, when you get there. Today, deal with today. He says, he says so don't worry about those circumstances that are going to be happening tomorrow. Deal with today's issues today. So the question that we have to ask ourselves, and when we talk about circumventing the circumstances, I'll explain what circumvent means in just a moment, but circumventing the circumstances, how do we not let circumstances get the best of us? Let me tell you what circumstances do. Circumstances have the tendency, if we let it, to rob us of gratefulness. We get overwhelmed, life happens, things come up on us, people say stuff, we get mad, we get glad, things are happening all day long, and beloved, we just kind of get in a place, in a situation where we just forget about being grateful. And so, how do we not let circumstances get the best of us? Well, here's what I think. Here's what I think it'll help. It requires you to discipline your thoughts. It requires you to discipline your thoughts. First, remember this. You cannot always control the circumstances that come in your life. But you can choose not let them, to not let them control you or overwhelm you. Let me say that again. You cannot control always control the circumstances that come in your life. But you can choose not to let them control you and to overwhelm you. Remember, every situation that comes is not an emergency. Uh, every now and then, I'm working in the house and my daughter's at home and she'll text me, Daddy, come here! And I'm thinking something is wrong. I'm thinking that it's an emergency. I'll run upstairs and I go, what's going on? Are you all right? Hey, can I have Chick-fil-A? Okay, you couldn't text that. Why am I running through the house? I've learned over the years not to let her urgent request, bless her heart, I love her, her urgent request control me. Now it's a quick text back, what do you want? You're not going to control the situation here. Oh, I was just wondering, blah, 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 blah. Isn't that how life is? Sometimes people will, will, will shout at you or a circumstance will come up on your radar or things are happening with your kids or your family or, you know, your job or, or your, even in your own life. And, you know, they, they reach level 10 almost in faster than a car that goes from zero to four. It just, it's almost you're on emergency mode immediately. And then when you really deep dive into it, you recognize, oh, that really wasn't all that deep. I don't know why I, I allowed this to control me. I, re, I read an interesting story that I thought was pretty cute and pretty funny. It's called, I Want My Dollar Back. Uh, some time ago, the, as the story goes, there was a man who uh, played the lottery, and he put one dollar down on a lottery ticket. And he, as luck would have it, he ends up winning $10 million. I'm sorry, he ends up winning $20 million. And so he decides that he's going to go to the home office where they, you know, to turn in his ticket. He goes to the state office to turn in his ticket. And the lady says, oh, okay, wonderful, you won. And he says, I want my money. And the lady says, well, that's not how it works. The type of ticket that you won, uh, you only get a million dollars every year. So we're going to give you a million dollars today, and you're going to get $19 million, one million every year for the next 19 years. And he says, no, no, I want my money. And he was insistent. He said, I want all of my money, and I want all of my money now. And she said, sir, let me explain it to you one more time. You're going to get a million dollars today, and you're going to get a million dollars for the next 19 years. It's your money, but you're going to get it over a 20-year period. He says, listen, I want all my money now or I want my dollar back. Nobody's laughing? Okay, did you laugh at that? <laughs> Isn't it interesting? The booth is laughing. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that if you don't discipline your thoughts, you'll lose focus on what's important? If you don't allow yourself to, yourself to stay calm and allow, not allow circumstances to overwhelm you, you can, how do they used to say it, you can miss the forest for just looking at the trees. You can spend all your time thinking that the most important thing is your dollar, or uh, you know, he, he wanted his dollar back, and he missed the whole fact that you, you're going to get a million. 
That's how life will overwhelm us. We'll get in the weeds on something very, very small, some circumstances that overwhelm, some circumstance that overwhelm us, and forget that God's got something bigger. Forget about the little small thing. Don't let that thing control you. And instead go, Lord, I can't deal with that right now, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be grateful for what you're doing in my life right now. You're a big God. You're awesome. Lord, this thing is, you know, a little bit worrisome, as they used to say years ago. It's a little worrisome for me. But at the end of the day, God, I know that I'm not going to allow this little thing to overwhelm something greater that you have for my life. And in fact, instead of me getting critical and negative and getting angry, I'm going to discipline my thought and I'm going to circumvent, I'm going to sidestep, that's what circumvent means, I'm going to side, uh, set aside, sidestep this little thing for something greater. So remember, every situation comes, is not an emergency. So some things you have to set aside. And remember the goal of being grateful. The, remember the goal of being uh, one who functions out of a spirit of gratitude. Some things, little things, you just need to delegate to somebody else. You know, you don't have to handle everything. I mean, some things have to be dealt with. Sometimes you just need to delegate it to somebody else and go, hey, honey, can you handle this? Sometimes you need to release it back to the one who gave you, gave it to you. Sometimes people put things on you and, uh, you know, you end up carrying their water and, and them and everything else that along with it, uh, and, and fill your life with worry. And some things you need to just give. And I will say this in most cases, you need to just give to the Lord. You just need to release to the Lord. Lord, I can't deal with this right now, but here's the point. I'm going to honor you and give you glory. So here's big idea number two. I only got three big ideas today, but here's the second one. Ask for discernment in every situation that seeks to overwhelm you. Let me say that again. Ask for discernment in every situation that seeks to overwhelm you. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 14 through 16. I'm going to read all of this text, but I really want to just focus on one phrase. So, so uh, 2 Corinthians, um, excuse me, 1 Corinthians uh, second chapter, verses 14 through 16. It says, the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness, and cannot understand them because they're discerned only through the Spirit. Now, let me just stop there for a minute. Verse 14 talks about people who don't have the Spirit of God. They can't discern things, often thing, uh, uh, discern the things of the Spirit that are around them. Okay, verse 15, he makes the shift. He says, the person with the Spirit, I love this, makes judgments about all things. Huh? Yeah, the person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things, including the circumstances that are in their life that are really only meant to distract them from the purposes of God. That's right. you got to ask for discernment in every situation. You say, Lord, this matter that's before me today, why is it here? You'll be surprised. The Lord will give you discernment and help you to recognize and realize that sometimes circumstances and things in life only come to distract you from the real goal of your gratitude that you want to give to God or the purpose that God has for your life. The Message Bible says it this way, we are spiritually alive and we have access to everything God's Spirit is doing. That's beautiful, isn't it? We have access to everything that God's Spirit is doing and can't be judged by unspiritual critics. What are the unspiritual critics? It's all of the stuff that's around you that's trying to grab your attention. Some things that come are only there. Let me say this very, very clearly. Some things that come in your life and in my life are only there to disturb your spirit and rob you of your intentionality to be grateful. I believe that's true. Sometimes the enemy will attack just with very small, unassuming things. And before you know it, you, you're in a deep hole over stuff. You know, one little phone call. I, I'll give you a perfect example of that. Just things that people say sometimes. 
I'll give you a perfect, perfect example of that in my life. Sometimes I'll read something on social media that will just cause me to go in a tinsy. I'm like, I can't believe they said that. I can't believe they said that Jordan is not the GOAT. I, I just can't believe it, and I'm gone. I'm lost. My spirit is disturbed. My life is disturbed. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in corona mode. I'm like, everything is just messed up. I mean, you know, right? And, and, and it really, really, a lot of things, I'm using that as a humorous example, but a lot of things come in our life, they disturb our peace to only create chaos. And before you know it, before you know it, you're complaining, you're criticizing everything, and you're upset and in emotional chaos. Anybody been there before? Huh? Anybody, anybody in the audience been there before, right? Anybody in the audience, you've been there before you know it, you are on a slippery slope to criticizing chaos, complaining, confusion, you're mad, you're angry, and you've just completely forgotten about gratefulness. Here's what you got to do. You got to discipline your thoughts and go, I need to set this aside. You know, I need to park this somewhere. Lord, help me to park this somewhere. Okay? So discern if what's happening in your life is God or not. And if it's not, step aside and get back into gratefulness. Here's point number three. And I'm closing real quickly here, but here's point number three. Let the word do the work in your life. If you're going to cultivate a spirit of gratefulness, let the word do the work in your life. When you discipline your thoughts through discernment, you can retrain your thinking for long-term uh, uh, disposition towards gratefulness. So let the word guide you into a daily posture of thanksgiving, a uh, daily posture of gratefulness. Give the Holy Spirit room through his word to guide you and correct you through his word. You know, don't allow yourself to just get so off track that you don't uh, put the word in you to help you to live a life of gratefulness. So let the word do the work in training your thinking towards an attitude of gratitude. Here's one scripture that I think will help us in Psalms 119, 27. He says, cause me to understand the ways of your precepts that I may meditate on your wonderful deeds. Huh? What? Yes. Lord, help me to meditate on your wonderful deeds. Retrain your thoughts. Here's the last and final point. Guard the gate. Guard the gate against ungratefulness. You said, what gate are we talking about? If you're going to cultivate gratefulness, we, more, we must guard against ungratefulness. Let me say that again. If you're going to cultivate gratefulness, you must guard against ungratefulness. Ungratefulness can, can creep in very, very easily. Gratefulness is not just something that comes from our lips, but it is an attitude of the heart. Hear that, beloved. It's an attitude of the heart. It's so easy, unconsciously so, to end up in a place where you're complaining. You don't even realize it. The cook doesn't get your food right, you're complaining. Life can just take you into pathways that cause you to struggle, and you're complaining. Here's big idea number three, and I'm done. It's very, very simple. You know this passage of Scripture. It comes from Proverbs 4.23. Big idea number three is from Proverbs 4.23. And here it is. Be diligent to guard your heart. Be diligent to guard your heart. Proverbs 4.23 says, above all else, guard your heart. This is the most important part of this verse, I think. For everything you do from the heart, your heart, everything you do flows from it. Everything you do flows from the heart. So you have to guard your heart against ungratefulness. That's important for us, beloved. If we're going to cultivate in this new season and reset ourselves, I want you to reset yourself in this new season towards a disposition of being grateful. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for strength. I'm grateful for his delivering power. Just the next 30 seconds, what are you grateful for? 
Let's start today. Make a prayer out of it. Pray that prayer every day. Pray a Thanksgiving prayer every day. Chat with your friends online there and ask and tell them what you're grateful for today. Today. It doesn't have to be anything deep or heavy. What are you grateful for today? I'm grateful for his love. I can go on and on. But while you're chatting with your friends online, tell them what you're grateful for. Listen, God hears and God wants us to develop that in our own hearts, the attitude of gratitude. And make a commitment today that you are going to go into this new season. You're going to reset your mind towards an attitude of gratitude. You're going to cultivate gratefulness in this new day that we're in, in Jesus' name. Well, I hope you were, were blessed by that word. I believe God's got something for us over these next several weeks that will strengthen us and help us to do a reset. I don't know about you, I need a reset. And I want to encourage you to join us every week for the next several weeks as we talk about things that we need to reset as we move forward in this day and age. Father, thank you for the privilege that we have to look to you. I pray that you would touch every heart and every life. I pray, God, your mercy, your grace, the peace of God that passes all understanding would keep us in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you, if you've not done so already, to if you're near your kitchen somewhere, get some communion elements. And He's playing um, the song, The Reckless Love of God. What I love about communion as we prepare to take it together is communion reminds us that this is the sacrifice that saved the world. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? It reminds us that Jesus' death and burial and resurrection, because he shed his blood on that cross, it saved the world. The world was lost. I was lost. You were lost. We all were. But because he went to the cross and died for our sins, man, he put us in right relationship with the Father. While we are pausing for a moment and preparing to take communion, maybe you're listening and watching this stream live or later, and you are not in relationship with Jesus Christ. You don't know what that is. I'm going to just tell you very, very simply. We all needed a Savior because we were lost. And Jesus died on the cross for our sins. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we would be saved. That's what he wants to do for you today, like he did for so many of us. He wants to save you. He wants you to come into relationship with him. And if you're there, you say, look, I don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, what a beautiful opportunity it is for you to come into that. You say, how do I do that? Just a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from unrighteousness. I am now yours. Just like that. Mean it from your heart. And then tell somebody, I've given my heart to Jesus. Tell somebody on the chat, I've given my heart to Jesus. Maybe you're looking at this later. Email us at info at refreshingwaters.org. We want to hear about what God has done in your life. Well, I hope you're ready. First, we take up the bread, which represents the body of the Lord Jesus Christ that was broken for us. And so, Father, we thank you for your body, which was broken. And we give you thanks and give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Would you take of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ now? Amen. Secondly, we think about the blood. The cup represents the blood that was shed on the cross for our sins. I love this verse. It says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. There is no canceling of sin. And that's what he did for us. And that's what he continues to do for us. Past, present, and future. His blood covers it all. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm glad about it. And I hope you are as well. So, Father, we thank you for your blood that was shed for us. And we might have life and have it more abundantly. We give you glory. We praise you. We remember your sacrifice. And we appropriate faith right now for healing, for salvation 
for deliverance in every area as we partake of your body, your blood now. In Jesus' name. Go ahead. Take up the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Well, God is good and greatly to be praised. I want to just end this service by saying happy Memorial Day. Uh, tomorrow we celebrate that uh, holiday, and I want to encourage you to continue to enjoy your family and uh, do whatever you do, but do it safely on tomorrow. God bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. God bless. Have a great week.